Good evening. Welcome. My name is Obin Dako. It's a good day. I want to share with you uh, the thought of money and your business. The thought of money and your business. Whether you have a registered business or you don't have a registered business, <laughs> your very life, it's a business. It's a business. And so, um, money is about one of the things that we constantly think about almost every day until maybe we have a lot of it and so far not many people have a lot of money particularly when you come from countries that are tagged as uh, developing countries or poor countries and so you see that a lot of people make decisions uh, maybe 90% of the decisions that people make is just around money. You know, where they work, what they eat, where they sleep, where they travel to, the course that they do in school, sometimes who their friends are, you know, the status that they have in, in life. A lot has to do with money. So, for instance, if you go to your village, you see that... Um, the people that you knew before when you go and you see that their the life has been that tough for them when they are talking to you the first thing that comes out is uh, has to do with money and so money is something that almost everybody uh, uh, thinks about all the time and we make a lot of choices on it the job that we work you know the job that we take the job that we don't take a lot of people just make decisions on that. Shadrach, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So let's see how we discuss uh, Pastor Shadrach. Uh, and so the thought is a dominant thought. Money is a dominant thought that a lot of humans have. Not only in the so-called poor countries, but all over the world. People uh, think about money every day. Married people worry about money. They worry about their children's school fees. You know, some people even say that when they, they, you know, the associations that they join, when you go and you don't have money, nobody respects you. And so the thought of money is constant. Whether you have a business or you don't have a business, you have a family, uh, you are, you're handling money. Money, they call it liquid, it's currency, it flows. And so the thought that we have on money we decide whether the money control us or we control money. The thing is that when money controls you, it controls you from the thought processes. The thought processes. It's not so much the money is which is in your pocket, but the thoughts that you have on money. That is what it controls you or you control it. They say that money is a dangerous uh, master, <laughs> but a good servant. Now, the choices of us to know how to make money a servant or how to make money uh, a master. If money is our master, then we do everything to serve it. All our choices will be to make sure that that master is happy. But if you understand money better, money will be a good servant. It's neutral. When, sometimes people say that, oh, when my friend got money, he changed. I think that money does not necessarily change people. I think that money reveals people's heart. When people get money, you get to know them better than when they had no money. Because their thought process is that they think the money is more important than people. And so once they get money, they hold on to it than the treasure which is in people. So the thought of money. How you were brought up shaped the way you think about money. The society that you live in shaped the way you think about money. Even the course that you read in, the, in college, in the university. The religion that you are in has a way of patterning the, the thoughts that you have on money. Some people see thousand cities and it's, it's big money for them. They can never see themselves handling, say, 100,000. Some people, when you mention any figure, 
it's like it will take thousand years for them to see because of the thoughts that they have about money and some people they just see it as figures <laughs> it's also the thought and so there is a way there's there, there is the thought of money for the rich and there is the thought of money for the poor and yet every human one way or the other uses money so some people some people are ready to kill for money and some people are ready to serve with money what do you do our understanding of money is very important especially uh, when it comes to uh, uh, this life our understanding of money and what it is if you see money as so special and so critical and so important and it's the best is the most important thing in this life you will lose a lot in this life because every decision that you make will be just about uh, money some people when when they when their money is somebody they can't sleep they have to make sure that they get the money we all talk about money and how it is made we all talk about it most people how they know money how money is made is only how to work for money that's all that they, they know how money is made is just today i was talking to <laughs> my little boy and i was saying so come now how do you how do you manage money and his answer to me was that oh you, you, you how do you make manage money you you manage money by <laughs> by getting more money <laughs> and i think he was he was right because if you don't have a lot of it you worry about it more if let's say your your monthly expenditure is thousand cities and you you the only money that you get to have for the whole month is say 200 cities you worry about money every day your your heartbeat goes up but if you're able to make more of that money say ten thousand a month and your expenditure is thousand the stress probably will come down you know so the thought processes that we have about money uh, shape all our decisions that we see uh, around uh, even our lives so when it comes to business i said that life your life whether you have a registered business or not your life itself is also a business how you manage it and how you, the thought processes that you have and how you think about your life uh, is is very important when it comes to money our financial knowledge is the fundamental that we have to have when it comes to money when our financial knowledge is weak we understand money from a wrong side we see money as a master we see money as a master. Our financial knowledge uh, controls our destiny, our destiny, and our freedom. It controls our destiny and our freedom. What do you think people will take the risk of going through all the things that they go through to get to, uh, let's say, Libya or let's say, Italy? A lot of them, if they had millions, they will never try that. And the thing is that it's not that they don't have. It's the thought processes that they have on money. That is why they make those choices. And those thought processes were informed by the background that they have. And so, they, they, you know, people want to make it, so to say. They want to make it. And so, for them, making it means that being able to build a house, being able to buy a car, being able to provide the basic necessities of life. For most people, the number one thing that they need uh, when it comes to money has never been the thought processes that they have to retune, the thought processes that they have to work on. It has never been that. It's always, had, um, I have to go to another country to work, and when I get good proper paying job, my finances will change. And so a lot of women are, are kept in a category of finances because of the way the process uh, their thoughts on money what do you do when you don't have money at all when the money that has come is nothing you struggle every day to buy food to eat you struggle every day to buy even when you're sick and you need paracetamol uh, maybe two CD or three CD is so tough it's so painful you probably have to call another person uh, to buy that what do you do if you if if at this stage in your life your life at, at this stage in your life you what you struggle every day to put your life together what do you do and how about if what you get and what you spend is just about power 
and what do you even do and think about money when you are in negative you don't have enough but you owe what do you do how do you set, set that how do you have a lot of money what do you do when you have more than what you need what do you do and so my my, my talk today is on your thoughts on money and your business usually most people in this life if you if you if you come from a poor background you barely have enough maybe your father didn't have enough your mother didn't have enough there was always a problem in the house when it when it comes to money your school fees was never paid on time you were even sent to just a normal school your clothes probably was always one when you got to a stage that you had to have a place to live or a place to stay you were in a room with friends you were moving around everywhere you couldn't you never had a room all by yourself those experiences have a way that affects or that has affected the way you think and you process money If you came from a background which they call middle class or something like that, where your father was working, your mother was working, probably you have you had your own house. You were not rich, but you were not suffering. There is a level of comfort that you also have. You don't know what it means to be rich, but you also don't know how what it means to be in abject poverty. You wanted a food food to eat and you will have it. But you did not have a lot of money, so you may probably did not even have a car by yourself when you're young, or maybe you had one car in the family and you repair and it works. You you didn't you didn't lack so much, but then you didn't have you you just maintaining. There's a lot of people like that, a lot in the suit in the tie, the professionals. They don't have much, but they are not that in abject poverty. They're not the ones who get up and thinking of what two cd do i need where would i get that two cd to go and buy that widget to eat or what would my child eat today they cross that those people also have a certain mind on money and their dominant thought of money even when they are in, a, in their adulthood or even when they work even when they have businesses is coming from that kind of exposure that kind of training and then when Let's say you, you, your, your parents were always in debt, you know, <laughs> always trouble, trouble, trouble. There's always somebody chasing them for money. Your understanding of money is also different. And when you come from a background, when there's always excess that you could buy what you wanted to buy, uh, there is that difference in the thoughts and how you think about money. People who have no money at all, who... Are coming from the background where they had money they had no money at all their thought process when they are when they start business or when they get to be serious to live their lives they a lot of them suffocate on money because for them it was survivor there's there was always nothing that was enough for them to live on and so they can even become business people the problem may have in enough today but there's always some, they are always in panic when it comes to money. Because that was the background that they, they are coming from. Now, if they don't get better knowledge to handle that, they could be millionaires, but they will always worry about the money not being there or losing the money. Because of the thought process. A man's thought is the man's world. The way I think about life is the way life is to me. And so the way I think about money every day is the way money is to me. That is not your word view is how you process the information that you have taken from the word. It's not how the world is. It's the way how you see the world. The way I see the world is not the way you see the world. So the world itself is, is only taken from the point of view of how I understand it. And much of it is coming from the background that I had when I was growing up, the exposure that I've had. That explains the world to me in a particular way. 
that is not really how the world is but that's how i understand it and so if i'm coming from a background that was almost always suffocating for money lack of money there was not much i didn't have enough and i am not fortunate to have knowledge that deals with that from my subconscious mind no matter how much money that i get i will still panic when it gets to, to money and if my morals are weak I would do anything not to live in that pain again even if i have to kill even if i have to i have to steal no matter what i would do that because i would not want to live with that pain again because i saw how my mother struggled i saw how my brother struggled barely survived because we did not have enough you know so until you have an interjection of quality knowledge that builds your character if you come from that background where there was always no money no matter what your status now you still don't want to live in that pain again and so you would do everything that you have to do to get money and to get enough if you have to kill your friend to get that money you will go ahead and kill it and if you look at the, the, the things that they call corruption and things like that. Look at the background of most of these people. A lot of them were coming from background that they hardly, hardly survive. So now that they have access to this money, even though it's not theirs, but they can have access to it, and they have not built any credibility in terms of character, any, any different knowledge as to how money is placed against lives and against people and against you if the money is not yours, don't take they will do anything to have enough. Even if they have to kill the whole country to court the money, they will do it. Why? Because of the background that they're coming from. They barely survive. And that's that's majority of the people anyway, because that is the transfer. If you look at, say, uh, the 1960s, 1970s, most of these people who are around 40, maybe 60 years old, who are handling most of these positions, that's the background that they're coming from. The only difference is that they had maybe a lot of them had scholarships to go to school and you know things like that but the thought process on money is still the same from the background where their father did not have enough the mother did not have enough they had to barely survive and now that they have access to this if they did not build that character they see money as do or die they see money as a lifeline that is how they process money. And so even if they start business, you see that if you're close to such people, they just have to do anything to make sure that the money comes in. They have to go for the wrong contract. They have to sign the wrong deal. They, they will kill human being. They will cut their friends. They will do anything because for them money is the only thing that is important in this life. Why? because of the background that they are coming from. They saw how painful it was to live with three brothers and sisters in a single room that they had to pay rent for. You know, so perpetually, that background can damage them and their decisions with money. And if they are not able to school themselves well with money, they will do anything to kill just to get money because they pay of their background was so strong and that's why somebody can easily uh, be pushed to go for drugs because they never want to live with luck because of the background that they went through they never want to experience anything like that and you see when you are coming from that acute shortage background the most damaging thing or the most dangerous thing is not the the lack of the money is the knowledge that they told you about money because they did not have enough knowledge on how money they did not understand enough to I mean they did not have enough knowledge in terms of how money was made and and where money had to be placed and so they transferred that knowledge to you and so you 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 the weakness of it is that you if you if if you stayed with their knowledge the only way you could build anything significant with character was that you switch from that kind of lack uh, of money from your background. And so maybe between, if you, are, if you have come from that background and you have been able to create money or, or been wealthy, it's because you switch from that knowledge. Or 
you are the one who is doing anything possible to make money. And so your knowledge on money has not changed. If you if you come from that background and you 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 have money but you know that you had all kind of ways to make that money. You're still that poor. That little boy who was afraid that the father did not have enough money, mother did not have him. You see the same thing because the one that thing that is bringing you money now is really not how money is made. You know, so you're cutting all kind of deal, you're paying all kind of bribe to get the project. You you do anything just because you don't want to live with that lack. So between you and that or that status of your parents is not much different. Because the way the money is coming to you is no way, it's not the way uh, money comes to people because you're not applying character so you you don't want to live with that pain you want to get money by all means and you don't care who you care you don't care who you sacrifice and so you will think that because now you have a house and a car i mean probably a business no matter how dubious the business is you think that you have a better understanding of uh, of money that is not true it's the same old play that is playing on you now and you can see it in the way you react emotionally when it comes to money. We can go to the next one. The next one is the, the you know the people they call uh, the, the 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 middle class, so to say. You know they they are coming from the background where they had they didn't they didn't struggle to eat. They probably had somewhere to sleep. Maybe the father was working, the mother was working, but they didn't have enough because the only way that money could come to them is because they had some work which paid them enough and the fact that you have a work that pays you enough does not mean that your thought process of money on money is strong enough to make you wealthy you know so some people who are paid well think that they understand money and how it's made and so they see that because those people usually live comfortable life, so to say, they are not struggling, them, they are not stretching themselves to get into abundance. They are okay with the house and the car. Their children seem to be, have the same kind of uh, desire and parting. They don't care so much about the ones who are very poor. They don't worry about those people that much. They worry about their family and themselves and how they will get by. And the only difference between the other ones and this one is that they seem to have clothes and a place to sleep, but they're still poor. They're poor in the sense that the only way that money comes to them is by working for it. Salary, that's it. They never try anything extra to get money, never. They don't want trouble, they go for good job and they are paid and they save some of the money they build a house they stay they send their children to the best school they don't want trouble for anybody they, they are very clean that is it now these people to most people think that uh, these people are, are rich in a way because they sometimes they live in a nice house they have some kind of profession but their knowledge in finance is weak it's weak and what separates the rich from the poor it's not the clothes they wear. It's the knowledge that they have. And so when you come from not so much poor background, when you come from a background that your parents were, you know, getting by, they had they had work, so you could always school fees could be paid. You could maybe you probably had a car. You think that you understand money, but you don't, because you only work for it from salary. And if you only work to get money. You don't know what money is and you don't know the freedom that money brings and so most people like that and and most people who come from that kind of background to start businesses you see that they start businesses that are more of the consultancy kind of business you know they don't want a lot of trouble for anything so they are consultants they don't take any risk they advise you they take their commission they, they stay where they are they are not that much ambitious. They are not that much aggressive. They're very comfortable because their world is only about themselves. And so far as they have a nice car to drive, they don't care whether the whole country does not have anything to eat. It's the thought process that you have on your background, on money. And so you think that you being comfortable means that you're rich. And those are the people who 
proud themselves so much is that the english word yes uh so much with the house that they have with the car that they have with the profession that they have you know that usually the revenue the source of revenue to them is just one and their best inf uh, investment decisions are you know uh, maybe the the, the, the the treasure bills and maybe the stock market and things like that and when they have a house they have achieved anything the danger with this is that until there's a tragedy they look rich until there's a tragedy when there's a sickness when there's a family issue you see that they were not that separate or different from the other ones who had nothing because if they have dangerous disease that they have to pay uh, hospital bills for two months three months one year and they cannot go to work for them to get salary they are gone and but why would they get to that point and still be that much comfortable knowing very well that the revenue that is coming in is not that much it's because of the thought processes that they were exposed looking at where they come from and so they live in comfort but they live oblivious of the fact that that source can cut and if that source is cut there is danger it's a thought process it's a thought process now there is the other one that probably is coming from a background where they had enough me i didn't go through that so i don't i can't say that much about the background <laughs> so they had enough and they could buy a lot of cars, a lot of houses, probably the, the father was maybe a business person. So they, they saw enough. People from such background uh, sometimes also don't re develop the strength to fight on their own because there was always abundance in the house. And so the, if the parents didn't do much to give them a lot of knowledge, a lot of training, a lot of wisdom, those people, uh, most of them tend to lose the energy, tend to lose everything that is handed to them. Why? Because for them, it was easy. It was easy, the thought processes. But amongst all this, what I think is very important is that it's not the knowledge that whether your parents were in serious poverty or whether your parents were just, you know, average parents who could just provide but who didn't have enough or whether your parents had enough. Is the thought process that you have found out yourself as an adult on money that is the game changer that is the game changer what are the books that you have read what are the things that you have heard on money and how do they apply to your life and how do they apply to your business those are the thoughts that will change the game because if all those backgrounds could hold anybody perpetually then everybody who had money should have come from a background which their parents were rich. Which is not so. A lot of people have come from background that experience a lot of lack, but they fought that lack thought process. They fought it. Sometimes it could, it could take them years for them to fight it. Because if you come from that kind of background, you have to fight that thought. Because they put it in you. You may deny it, they put it in you. They lack it. They put it in you. They shape your emotions. They shape your decisions. Now, you have to go extra mile to change that which the lack put in you. The lack, you should see the lack and say that I don't want to be like this. But you should also have a better knowledge as to how money is run, how money is understood in this life and how money is run. Because if you have money, you'll be able to know or you have the liberty to choose where you want to work. You will choose where your children go to school, where you want to live. The freedom that money brings, at least some bit of freedom, where you could say that I'm not going to work tomorrow and, and, and nobody can say anything to you. It comes from the thought process that you have. And when it comes to running business, it's the same. If you think that just when you have 100,000 is big money and you don't want to worry yourself, it's a thought process that you have. Yes, somebody has billions. 
And so, so what, how much is enough to you? Some people will say that me, I don't want enough of money. I just want a letter. That's a thought process. And that is a weak thought process. I just want something small that can have a house and a car. That's a weak process. Because when you are in trouble, you sell those things, which means you didn't have enough. And so how they have brought us up and how we make decisions in a business. For instance, if your business has debt, your thought processes could kill you or your thought processes could help you about money, could help you to fight back and get the business on track. Now, how do you de develop that thought process when you come from that acute background of shortage, of lack, of comfort? And now you have start, you started, you started a business and this business was doing so well and tomorrow, boom, there's a, there's, a, there's a problem and you have this debt on your hand, 100,000, 200,000, 1 million debt. How do you process that? Do you panic or you resolve to fight back and win? That is a thought process that you would have to redevelop if you are coming from such backgrounds where you had a lot of luck or where you had comfort or where your parents even had a lot but they did not teach you about the tools to get money and to run. And so when you are hit with emergency, do you panic? I was told that uh, some people, when their business have problems, they change their address, they close their office, they will never talk to the bank again. That's a weak man's mind. If your business has trouble, never change those. Go back, go to the people and fight back. Even if they don't understand what you're saying. Even if they, they, they tag you. Because you are not going to change that weak thought that created the problem for the business if you run away. If you run away, you will never change that. If you go to hide, you will never change that. And if you beat yourself and cry and weep, it means that your thought process on money is weak. Because you think that it would take you forever to make money and fight back. Yet it's not like that. Because if that business created that debt, that business can create that wealth for you again. It's a matter of knowing what you don't know and what you know. So your thought process, how do you handle the difficult moment when it comes to your, your, even your personal finances? When you have trouble, when what is coming in is not enough. You cannot just live a lie and say that I just want to party. Life is too short. No. Especially when you have a family, you have the onus is on you to make sure that you create essence for them because money really must be in essence. So until you get, you, you fight back to get the essence, you don't understand money and how it controls a lot of things and your decisions. Even at the personal level, how much more at the business level, you know, so even though you work, you cannot just depend on one source of revenue. If you depend on that, then it, it could mean that maybe they are paying you 100000 a month and you just spend 10000 or 1000 Then maybe you don't have to worry yourself. But very few people could be in that kind of category. Which means that the first thought, that the first prominent thought on money that you have to understand is that money is important and that essence of it coming in is very much critical to your even your health, your personal health. And don't deceive yourself to say that any little is okay. That is a lie. You don't need little money. You need a lot of money. Because money gives options. At a personal level and at a business level. You can say that, oh, me, my business, I want to just make 5000 and be okay. It could be a set goal. When, once you meet that goal, you have to reset that goal again. Because excess of it is very much important. Even if you're just thinking about yourself... You need excess of money because that you have options. If tomorrow there is an emergency, you can solve it. But beyond that, you cannot think only of yourself in this life. There are people that you can help when it comes to money and if you have enough. There are destinies that you can change. So the thought processes that we have on money and on business is that we should not have only, only a little money and be that very much comfortable and that much as uh, uh, relaxed because you made a lot of money.
that is a weak thought process and part of it is coming from the Bible. So those of us who were born in this part of the world, may, many of us have never seen uh, wealth. We have only seen people who have houses and who have cars. We have never, we have, we, we are yet to get the, the, the wisdom that people use to create abundance of wealth. We are yet to, and that's a fact because most of the people that we know who we call rich, usually most of them, are, you know, you know, the connections, you know, the, the link, you see that their business is a political business or they were politicians or, you know, things, things like that. That's what we have seen. And that is the dominant thought. And that's how you see a lot of young men. They think that the only way to get money is to get into politics or to get a contract from the government. That's all that we all know. It's a thought process. It's a dominant thought process that controls everything. But people who have made rare money think differently. A lot of them do not even want to do anything with government. <laughs> they want to build their business independent of anybody. Because that is a strong thought process that they may have had from reading somewhere. You know, they saw it. So the thought process is what controls you. And they know the freedom that comes when you have money that you created independent of some of these institutions. And so strong thought protest process on money is understanding that money is important. And if you have a lot of it, you have options and you can do a lot. No matter what your vision is, you have to fuel it. And that which fuels the vision is the money. And that the foundation of money is the right financial thought, the financial thinking that you have. And if your financial thinking is weak, <laughs> your thoughts <laughs> of money will be weak. And so you'll be the one when you meet people, you'll be the one always asking for money. If you're the one always asking, begging people for money, asking for money, you're asking for free money. It means your thought on money is wrong. Even if you have a business, you're always the one begging people to help you, to bail you out, and you are never responsible for anything. When you ask for people, when you ask people money, you don't intend to pay it back. You are trying to give excuses all the time. It means that your thought process is a weak one, and you will never control worth it. Because one of the things about the strong thought process of money is that you become responsible. You want to take charge. You don't want to run away. You don't want free things. You don't want to be the one begging. You be the one who you are responsible for what you take. And if you take anybody's money and there is trouble, you go fight. You say that I took this money, there is trouble. I want to, I want to bring it back, give me time. And you are not the one trying to plan and trick people. You know, trick people to, to take their money. That's a weak thought process. And yet people have lifestyle. People have lifestyle. They sit down to plan to go and cheat people to, to get money. That's a thought process. And some people even start business that way. They run their businesses that way. They go to take bank loan knowing that they will never pay. They employ boys to do something for them and they know that they will never pay. That's a thought process. And that's not somebody who is wealthy. That's somebody who is poor and who probably looks well dressed. So the thought process that we have in our finances, how money is made, what structure of thinking that you have to have to create money is what separates you, the importance that you attach to money. Money is important, but money is no more important than life. And so if it comes between money and life, which one do you choose? That's a thought process that you probably have developed. When it comes to life and when it comes to money, I'll choose life. Because once you lose life, you can never get it back. But if you lose money, you probably can fight and to get it back. You know, so those are little, little uh, uh, thoughts that you have to have. That when it comes to money, you have to be honest. When it, comes, when it comes to money, you plan not to cheat people. You plan not to lie to people. You plan not to forget about the people that you have taken your money. Never. And that when you have trouble, you fight to correct them before you go to the next stage. 
That's thought process on money and thought process on your business. And that when your business is in trouble, you don't run away, you stay. When your finances in the family is in trouble, that's why you come together to plan. You don't kill people because there's trouble. When somebody mistakenly runs away with your money, that's not the time to, to, to feel like you are... Because if you understand money, you know that money can be made again. You know, so you don't want to keep money to kill people. Those are thoughts that you have to have. And so my name is Wabinda Ako. Uh, we are talking about the thought of money and your business. And I'm saying that your life is a business, even if you don't own a registered business or registered company. And how you understand money. Money affects the way that we, we make choices. And you cannot just put the subject of money somewhere and think that you have money. And the culture, the family background that we are coming from, there is a way that they all told us about money. There are a lot of uh, proverbs on money. There are a lot of folk tales that they say about money. And a lot of it is not to just to make you rich. A lot of it is just to make you understand money from a poor man's point of view. So uh, if you want to create money, then you have got to change those thoughts. You know, money gives freedom, at least freedom of your time and freedom of choices. When people have money, they have choices. They have choices. You can decide to live anywhere that you want to live because you have money. I'm not talking of the money just to the one that they are paying you 2000 3000 monthly no i'm talking of the money that you have created with the mind and the expertise that you have you know so people make right decisions or right choices around money if their thought on money is right if your thought on money is wrong your choices will be wrong your money will, will you know life when we meet people and they say that they are struggling usually is is because it's finances and yet our financial knowledge is fundamental to the life that we live and money is about one of the things that uh, they hardly teach us anyway is it their fault it's not their fault because most of them they did not know it most of them just thought that once you go to school and you get a good profession you will get it not necessarily so financial knowledge is different from going to school Financial knowledge that builds you to create wealth is different. And I said earlier that if you come from a, a family that had no money, your subconscious mind on money is different from the family that had money. And if your family look like rich but didn't have excess, there's a way that you also think of money. Now, you can correct that. You don't have to leave the one that your family gave you. You can correct that if you put the thought rightly. And putting the thought rightly means that you're getting the thoughts that work with money. And there are a lot of information or there's a lot of data. People have come up with how these things are done and done well. And so in our society, people, you know, place a lot of importance on money. And um, they don't really care how you made it. You know, so far as you can prove that you have something, people think that you are rich. Um, maybe. But the one with good quality financial knowledge, money knowledge, is the one who can recreate that money, stay in Ethica, stay in legal in the community, in the country. Those kind of people are the people that you learn money from. Those are the things that you use to increase your thought. If you heard that somebody stole a lot of money, that's not, a, that's not somebody who understands money. He just stole it. But if you see somebody who built a business from nothing and built a right business and it's not worthy, that is somebody who knows something about money. If you see that somebody worked somewhere in a company and was able to get salary and grow that money through investment, that's somebody that you would know that knows something about money. And so, the thoughts of money that will make you and your business go through the turbulence of life and win is the fact that you don't deny that money is important. If money is important, but then you don't care for it. And money 
the one that is legitimate comes with credibility comes with some bit of honesty comes with uh, value uh, that you place on lives and that understanding that if the the inlets of the money that comes to the family and to the business are many uh, you have the leverage of options you know if the money is coming in more than what goes out is very important and you don't always think that me I just need a little money and if that money that I have is you know I don't want I have a brother I have a cousin actually who thinks that you don't need that much money you just need a little to get by and a lot of people hold that kind of opinion I don't know why you want to hold that kind of opinion anyway after all, you will not get all the money in this world but I don't want to place my life to say that I just any little money to get by in a house and a car is enough I will never say that because even if I even have a house and a car, what can I do for another person? Can I build a school for my uh, village? Can I go and build a dormitory for my secondary school? Can I build the whole block for the university I went to? What can I do for my country? Can I build a whole city for the country? That will take money. And so I will not place a bracket. I will not place a limit on, on, on how much money that I have to have in my thought. Never. I would want to lift that cup and be prepared for as much money that can come to me. If it comes and I work towards it and it's many, it's okay. But it's better to have money than not to have money. Because money can get a lot of things rightly in your life <laughs> uh, done. And so your thoughts on money. When you start a business, if your thought on money is weak, your business will struggle. If your thought on money is that you can just do anything kululu to get money, your business will struggle. Because any con man can trick you and they will get you. Because your thought on money is not, is not sanitized. Your thought on money is not accurate. But you think that money is so special and anything that you have to do to get it, you'll get it. Uh, you do to get it, you'll do to get it, you know? So if you start a business with weak mind and because a lot of us are coming from background where uh, our thought of money is not that strong, we carry that into starting business and to doing business. If you start a business and you think that you have to show off, therefore the little money that business is making, you want to let everybody know that you have succeeded, you see, you struggle in a business. If you're that kind of person that you have to just let people understand that you have rich and yet the money is not there, your thought on money is wrong and therefore the business will struggle. If you are the kind of person who thinks that uh, working with people, you cannot trust anybody except yourself and even you don't trust yourself, so you can never leave anything to anybody except you and when it comes to money. Instead of you looking at how to build any system to manage things, you think that you are the only one who can, you can trust and you will never give any money to anybody to go and do anything. You are limited. Your business will struggle. Why? Because of the things that you heard when you were growing up about money. And you are trying to carry those things to build in a business. And it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. So you see that you are the one doing everything. You are the one going to pay the electricity, going to pay the taxi driver. Everything is you. Because they told you that never trust anybody with money. And that's a weak thought. And you can carry that. And that thing will, will strangle or will restrict your ability to build any good business. If they told you that never owe anybody. And you believe it. Never buy on credit and you believe it. It's a good approach. But when you start a business and you employ people and they work for you and at the end of the month you, have, you don't have the money, that becomes a debt. Whether you wanted to owe or you didn't want to owe, if they, did, if they work for you, that is a debt. And they will take the money. And so if they told you that we we don't want trouble at all we don't want any trouble from anybody it's not like that you cannot take that money you cannot take that thinking into building any business and you succeed 
So you wean yourself off that kind of knowledge. So your financial knowledge controls your destiny and it controls your freedom. Your financial knowledge controls your destiny and your freedom. If you think that somewhere, somewhere, some magic will happen and then you'll be rich. <laughs> Which a lot of people believe so. That's why they go from one person to the other looking to be rich. They are going for magic. Instead of changing their financial knowledge. They believe that some way, somehow, somebody will pray for them one day and they will become wealthy. That's a financial thought. It never works. Don't believe it. It never works. Your wealth is as strong as your financial knowledge. The richness that you control, the genuine one anyway, is that. And so you study money to understand it, to improve in the thought of money and how to build a business that you, you think you're doing, even have to, how to even organize your finances. Those are the ones that are going to set a foundation for you to become wealthy or for you to struggle all your life financially. Those are the foundations. And so if you don't look at the foundations rightly, and if you don't correct them, if I don't correct mine, and think that just time goes, just by time going, things will change. Uh, finances are not like that. Money is not like that. Money changes with the right knowledge. So you work on that if you want your finances to change. You work on that. You improve it. Without that, your personal finances will not change. And your business finances will not also change. Because you have bought a lie that the finances will change just because time is improving. And it's never true. It's never true. So never, ever think that money is not important. Don't kill for money. Don't screw people for money. Don't cheat for money. It doesn't worth it. Just build the base, the financial knowledge that you need and continue to work and increase the options that the money comes in. And if you owe people, be kind enough to be honest to them. And if somebody owes you, don't kill them. Be patient. Be kind to people. Those are financial thoughts. If you're a wicked man, and even if you only get money to destroy you. Because money is a bad servant. It's a good servant, but a bad master. So if you're wicked, if you have to cheat everybody to get money, if you have to lie to everybody to get money, it will destroy you. If you have to screw the country, screw your company, lie to everybody to get more than what you deserve, it will destroy you. <laughs> Money is not that difficult. Money comes with the right thoughts, with the right thinking, with the right tools, with the right understanding. And that, that is what you look for. That is what you work for. That is what you look at. Never screw people for money. Never lie to people for money. It doesn't worth it. You don't need it. Just stay with what you have. Be